This weekend marks 40 years since the start of the Falklands War. On the 2nd of April 1982, Argentine forces invaded the British overseas territory of the Falkland Islands. Commemorations are going on across the country and there are also plans for a special commemoration at the absolutely brilliant National Memorial Arboretum on the 14th of June. I'm delighted to be joined now by Con Cochlan, who is the defence editor and chief columnist at The Telegraph. Uh, Con, so good of you to join us. Thank you very much indeed. Going to come to the Falklands in a moment, uh, but I was just talking to a, a, an old mutual mate of ours, uh, Mark Seddon from Al Jazz and the United Nations, and Elizabeth Braw uh, from Rusi uh, about Ukraine. Um, in all of your years as a defence and diplomacy commentator, have you seen a more complex and more intractable challenge than Russia v Ukraine? Um, I suppose one, one thinks of the Balkans campaigns uh, in the 1990s and, you know, I covered the Yugoslav conflict and, and Bosnia, and that was pretty complicated. But of course, at that point, uh, R Russia, which wanted to be involved, was very weak. So it was really a lot of what happened in the Balkans was because the West did not want to get involved. We sat on our hands um, and the whole of Yugoslavia fell apart with Srebrenica and everything else. Um, what, is, what is different, very different about this, is it's taking place in what is being described as a new Cold War. We have a newly militarized Russia um, with a president who is determined to reshape the boundaries of modern Europe by force. Um, and that, that, is, that is a complete uh, different ball game from what we faced uh, at the end of the Cold War when Russia was very weak. So um, that, off the top of my head, I can't think of anything more complicated since, since uh, the Balkans. Yeah. And, and as I was talking to, to, to Mark and Elizabeth just before you were kind enough to join us, do you sense that there is a public frustration, a declining, not compassion, because people still clearly care about what's happening to the good folk of Ukraine, but, but with the cost of living crisis and all sorts of other stuff, and you've got a big interview in the paper today with Kwasi Kwarteng about trying to do something to get energy prices down, that's kind of taking over their focus, do you sense? Well, you, you say that, Alistair, but here where I live down in Sussex, you know, a lot of houses have ribbons denoting the Ukrainian flag. And there's even, somebody's even flying a flag from a flagpole of the Ukrainian flag. So, yes, of course, the, the cost of living crisis is going to be very painful, particularly for lower pay, paid people. Uh, and we are all looking at astronomical energy bills uh, for, for the foreseeable future. And a factor in that is the Russian conflict. Um, and unfortunately, Europe's energy dependence on Russia. Now, you know, I've been writing the Telegraph for a decade saying it is absolute madness for, for Europe to a lesser extent us. We have very limited uh, dependence on Russia for, for gas. But when you look at Germany and France and Italy, they are completely in hock to, to Russia for their to keep the lights on, basically. Uh, and, and why they've allowed this to happen when it's been quite clear for a decade or more, and certainly since the Crimean invasion of 2014, that you know, we are dealing with an old-fashioned despot in the Kremlin who's got a czarist mentality, who's completely crushed all opposition, murdered his opponents in, in some cases, in the case of Boris uh, Nemtsov and, of course, uh, Alexander Litvinenko here in London. Um, but we've still done business with these people. So... That's the folly. But coming back to your question, Alistair, you know, I think there is a lot of public support for the Ukrainian cause. I think the, the, the great British public understand yeah. there's an important point of principle here that you can't just go and invade a country because you don't agree with it. So I think people do support it. Uh, a lot of people are desperate to take in Ukrainians and give them sanctuary and are very frustrated with the government, not because of energy prices, but because the Home Office can't get its act together over visas. Yeah.
And fascinating, it's a perfect segue. Same issues as with the Falklands. You can't simply have an Argentine junta run by a bunch of nasty military people invading a territory that is not theirs, whatever they call it, the Malvinas. It is not theirs as a British protectorate. That's what the good people of the Falklands wanted. Thatcher read that clearly and dispatched the task force. Same again, uh, not in Bosnia. That was about the breakup of Yugoslavia and who wanted what. But again, it was national interest and who wanted a bit of territory. Another war that we both covered and wrote about uh, was exactly the same, and that was Iraq going into Kuwait. It's about grabbing stuff that's not yours. Yeah, I'm not, I mean, if, if, if we in the West and, and the Western democracies want to maintain our way of life, maintain our freedoms, our freedoms of choice, whatever they may be, our freedom to speak our minds, then these important principles have to be um, protected when they are challenged by rogue dictators, whether they are Gautieri in, in Argentina, Saddam Hussein in Iraq, or Vladimir Putin in, in Russia. And the great British public gets this. I mean, Margaret Thatcher's decision to, to liberate the Falklands was not popular politically. A lot of her own Conservative Party thought this was a great gamble. If you remember, the Reagan administration was very equivocal about it, um, and it, you know, it took people like uh, the, the then Defence uh, Secretary, the US Defence Secretary, Casper Weinberger, to put, put some backbone in the uh, American administration. But, but when you look back at it, the British public was actually behind the task force. Yeah. Um, and as, as a lot of historians have written, and my former editor, Max Hastings, has a big piece today in the Sunday Times, you know, recalling his role in the war. Um, when you look back at it, it was a turning point for the British people because we stood up for freedom and it gave us an enormous lift. And I think, you know, in uh, coming out of COVID with, with the cost of living crisis, all the other issues we need to face, I think people feel buoyed inside to know that they are supporting the cause of freedom and a just cause in supporting Ukraine, just as they did with the Falklands. Yeah. There's always a political upside to doing the right thing. Con Coughlin, a great pleasure to talk to Hopefully. you. Thank you so much. And uh, come back and talk to us again. You're very welcome anytime. Thank you so much.